Connecting the dots. Connecting his guests to the world. Creating more connections. Welcome to The Connection with your host, Jay Morales, podcasting from the Parkville Studios. Thanks for joining me on The Connection with Jay Morales today. As you know, the mission of this show is to connect you with people and show them how they're connected to the community, to business, to their families. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all connected to something. Mm -hmm. And today I have Christy Anderson on my show. Christy, thank you for joining me. You today. are so welcome. Thanks for having me. In your busy schedule. Yes. And it's, I hate even using the word busy, but you have quite the story, right? So let's start back when you were first in Omaha. Right. You started out on radio and TV, correct? In the media, was that, am I correct? That's right. So television broadcasting was my life for about 15 years. Wow. Um, not just here in Omaha, but all over the country. So when I was a young kid coming out of high school, I had a drama teacher that told me, this is what you're going to do. You <laughs> That's know? awesome. So you have teachers who see something in you not that you don't necessarily see in yourself, which is amazing, and that's why teachers are so important. And so uh, I went to college in Lincoln and went to J School, and um, wonderful school, and then did broadcasting for, gosh, 15 years all over the country, but also locally here in Omaha. So before your drama teacher said to you, you're going to be a broadcast or you're going mm -hmm. to do this what were your what was your thoughts before what you know as a little kid what did you right. think you wanted to do well I was always that kid uh, I was always that performer right yes. so I have two sisters I'm the middle of three girls <laughs> and uh, we have videos of uh, when people would come over and visit um, I would want to put on a show for them of course, and so my sisters would join in and my mother has videos of us as little girls and I'd be in the middle of singing and then I'd be pushing my sisters off the coffee table <laughs> and out of the way so I think from a very early age it was it was seen that uh, Christy wanted to be, I guess, the center of attention. I guess that could be a negative or a positive thing, but it's interesting to see how my career path went. And, you know, when I was in high school and and, and it, that teacher came to me, she said, well, what are you going to study in college? And I said, I don't know, psychology? And she said, right. no, you're going to do broadcasting, and this is why. And so I, I, I trusted her, and... Um, and so I just took her advice and, and there we went. I mean, a lot of hours go into that. I, I think sometimes when we see people on TV that they all of a sudden got there. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the journey. Did you ever want to quit or at least look back and say, oh, maybe this is not for me while you were doing your schooling or some of your training up until your first time on TV? It is absolutely not for everyone. And, and in that field, and the field has changed a whole lot um, actually since I was in it and started in it a long time ago um, but but yes absolutely it is it's a tough field it's it's a low paying field people yes. don't realize that um, they think oh you're on television so you must make all this money that's and, what I thought too and not at all in fact my first job um, out of college was 18,000 bucks a year. So, oh my gosh. Um, you know, kids that I worked with were stealing the toilet paper in the station bathroom because they couldn't <laughs> afford it. Wow. Yeah. So you don't make a lot, but I, but I love journalism and I love storytelling and I love just meeting new people every day. But of course, some of the situations that you get in and some of the things that you cover are not easy situations. And so it's not for everyone, but I really did have a passion for it. Um, and I thought that would be all I would do uh, my entire career. But of course, life changes and we go through different changes in our life and then you end up on another path, which is kind of what has led me to today. Absolutely. So let's talk about that $18,000 a year first job. <laughs> my was, dad was not happy, by the way. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, let, you know, let's talk about, it's not a nine to five. Not at all. And so do you think that is when you started this work ethic of yours because I know I've known you for years now mm -hmm. and you've got an incredible work ethic can you kind of tell me what some of the things that built your passion to what you do like from broadcasting it wasn't nine to five no no in fact my first job uh, was 1 a.m. to 10 a.m. I was producing oh a morning show. Yes. And so I would go to work when people were coming home from the bars. Yeah, it was yes. not exactly a safe situation. So 1 a.m. to 10 a.m. was my first shift. And then throughout those 15 years, I worked every shift you could think of from um, a night shift to, so you come in at 2 and you leave at 11 p.m. 
or um, towards the end of my career when I was here at Channel 7 and did uh, mostly, I anchored a couple nights a week and then I did 7 Can Help was my franchise and that was the best schedule actually that I ever had wow. and that was more 9 to 5. That's still, I mean, and when you're off TV, there's still a lot of, off screen, there's still a lot of work there. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with the publicity part of it? Like, your life was public, right? I mean, I'm sure people were looking in your shopping cart, what is Christy Anderson <laughs> buying? Right. Can you kind of share any stories that maybe like, you didn't have a private life or did you? Um, I think part of the time it was fine, and um, but I did go through a couple of situations that really sort of put that into focus. Yeah. Um, when I worked in another state, I, I had a stocking is issue with someone that I okay. ended up putting in prison. So oh my uh, when you're in the public eye, you yes. do um, take on some things that you shouldn't have to, but you're in those situations and so people see you and, and maybe they see you and they watch you and they think that they know you and and that's not that can be an unsafe situation sometimes i mean that was a very rare instance however there are many young women in television news that have had some similar instances where maybe they get some letters from prison or they do those types of things um, mine just was escalated and i didn't even think about that so you know being in the public eye, you have more eyes on you than average than the average person. Mm -hmm. And then you get more attention. And sometimes the attention, like you said, is good, mm -hmm. but it's also where you are vulnerable to the public. You are, and you know, and people are mean, Jay. I mean, they really can be. Um, I can remember getting emails and phone calls about just my hair being out of place or my outfits or that type of thing. And I wow. thought, are you not even listening to my journalism or my reporting or the story that I'm telling or the issue that I'm covering? Um, sometimes it's because it's a visual medium. Right. You know, we, we have a society, and I think, unfortunately, for girls and for women, it's it's harder um, because we um, it's great that we can go out and we can uh, be career people, but we're still held to a certain standard sometimes re in regards to our looks and and that type of thing. Absolutely, and I think you know aesthetics does play, because my face was made for radio, that's why we're listening to this podcast <laughs> right now, so yeah. I'm safe. But I do wanna address that, and that was one of my questions, right? I wanna connect our listener to you right now. I, I wanna talk about the female out there who's under scrutiny, who's sometimes has a double standard, right? Mm -hmm. Because especially in the profession of journalism, because, or, or sports broadcasters even now. What do you think the challenge is that hasn't changed for a female journalist from when you started to now? What are they still facing? The same thing. I, I think that it's people will call them on it more now than they ever used to. I think before when I first started, maybe women would get those types of comments or those things would happen to them. And it would be a little more, um, you know, suck it up buttercup or brush it under the rug kind of stuff. Right. Um, we are in a place now though, I think where women um, feel that they are more empowered with their voice. Yes. And so with social media and different outlets like that, you will see more women um, you know, speak about it and be honest about it. I mean, this isn't a situation where I really have don't, never told many people about that because I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I chose that profession, and right. some of the, those are some of the things that go with it. But right. I, so I do think we've we've gotten a little bit better in being honest about that and really not tolerating it. You know, for years I think women would tolerate that type of behavior. Um, maybe they thought that they deserved it or it was expected or it just happened or, or just hey, happened christy this is going to happen don't d just ignore it right where today i'm glad today that you're helping educate people on it is not acceptable and it's not just something that's going to happen right. you know and i i think i'm glad that i'm speaking to a powerful business entrepreneur and i don't even look at you as a powerful business female entrepreneur do you know what i mean mm -hmm. i look at you as just someone who's accomplished and but they're unfortunately in this country or in this media space it's still happening yeah can i shift gears here sure. now to where has television brought you and brought your career and your businesses what has it morphed into now sure you know um i started in tv but those relationships and those experiences have opened some other doors for me 
um, I am so blessed. You know what I mean? I am Absolutely. so blessed. I've had such a wonderful career and I have met some amazing people. I've met, you know, I've gotten to cover everything from presidential campaigns to Hurricane Katrina, right? And Absolutely. So, so when I decided to leave news and I decided that at because of family. So yes. it was when I had my son, who's now 12. Yes. Um, I was working at a television station uh, in Michigan. And when he was a baby, things just kind of change. And instead of moving to that next market and really having a terrible schedule, we decided to come back to Omaha. And so I left that for family reasons, stayed in news for a little bit, but then decided, you know, for family reasons, maybe it was best for me to look at something else. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but the opportunity that came first, um, I was the press secretary for Senator uh, Mike Johans. I remember that. So Mike Johans was a two-term governor here in the state of Nebraska, yes. a wonderful human being, and I had an opportunity that came to me to help him for a while and while he was still in the United States Senate. So I did that and then and that came through relationships I had through the media and then from there relationships I had turned into a job as the communications director for Mecca, I the Century Link Center. Yes. TD that Ameritrade had to be Park. fun. That was fun. I it saw was. the fun that you had, but it's a lot of work still too. It is. So it's still a lot of hours. You're working a lot of events. Um, but I tell you what, um, I love that. I love being around people and I just love meeting new people all the time. So my jobs have afforded me that and, and still what I do today. So I do uh, public relations and communications consulting for a number of people and a number of clients, but I also do commercial real estate. And commercial real estate is something where I get to meet um, and help different types of clients every single day. Uh, with those needs. So I'm still working amongst people and, and, and I need to. That's sort of what feeds my soul. And I see that's where you thrive. And again, um, the show, The Connection, you're a connector. You're a connector of people. It doesn't matter. I don't think the product is important. What's important is the people who you connect to the services and products you provide. Right. And that is your brand. And that has got you to where you're at. So can you kind of tell me about the challenge of, of or why you still, uh, you know, why you love PR mm -hmm. is is it there's someone listening right now says I want to do that too what's your right. advice for them you know it's different and there's so many different kinds of public relations and community relations but I would say that now more than ever companies need someone in their corner that understands and knows that because you know social media is such where you really have to make sure that you're out using those tools to be in front of your clients and and that you're providing a message and telling people what you do and, and what service you have but at the same time you have to be so careful about what you say on those platforms as well so i think people in pr are, are really important right now yes um i do a lot of different kinds of public relations and so uh, but one of the ones i love the most is is event public relations and so you know just last week i was um, working on behalf of a client for and uh, we had jeff foxworthy in, in their awesome. store i saw you on facebook yeah. and that had to be somebody that you wanted to meet totally and he was as nice in person as you would think he would be and and hilarious was right? he gracious like was he truly as, as, as down to earth as people say he is he absolutely was and more you know and so so those are the types that I love, and everybody says, "Oh, that's so fun," but it but it is work too, and yes. um, and every celebrity or every person like that that I've ever had the pleasure of knowing or doing work for or with, um, everyone has a different personality, and every job is different. But I sort of thrive on that as well. No, absolutely. Now let's talk about the business world real quick. There's needs, like you said, for you know for. Um, bad PR, right, mm -hmm. that has to be fixed or cleaned up or portrayed a certain way. How much demand is in the market for corporations like that right now? I think it's huge. And and I think there's a lot of companies out there that probably don't really think that they need that service. Um, but if they were to really think hard about it, they might think they would. Um, there's examples every single day in the media and on Twitter or what have you of a single communications piece, whether it's from the CEO or just one of the employees, that can truly bring an entire company down with the words of one person right. in that type of platform. Right. So you need to have one, you need to be mindful of that. You need to be making sure that you have wonderful external communications for your company and telling people about what you do, but you but internal communications within your staff and your culture and making sure that the people that work for you um, are ambassadors 
and positive ambassadors of your brand, so important. Right. Um, and so I, I feel uh, absolutely that there's a huge need for that. What, what I hear from you is communications are so important in business and relationships and professional relationships. I think we take that for granted as a society. We just take for granted, everyone knows, mm -hmm. they know, or you know, how does this look? And I think you are a great storyteller. I think you know how to position the story correctly for a good outcome because so many things are swept under the rug and, and not you know really brought forth right to light and that's bad PR. And when people say to mm -hmm. me, oh, any PR is good PR, I don't believe that. No, no. and it's not about, you know, PR people sometimes get uh, a reputation for just spinning bad news and covering things up, but it's really not that way at all. And in fact, the way I operate is, you know, if I have a client who has done something that, and they messed up, the first thing I might tell them is, you need to apologize. Right. You know what I mean? It's it's about being authentic. It's yes. about living your brand. It's about being authentic. And it's about telling that story. And if you have a wonderful company and a wonderful story, why shouldn't you tell people about it? Authenticity is so expensive mm -hmm. today, right? But it's so valuable, which means if you're authentic, you need somebody to help you get that authenticity out there. It's not much more than an email or a, uh, uh, a press release right. or whether it be, it's a it's a series of sequences that carry that brand out. And I think people think that they can just do that for free. Right. They need a professional like you. I think so, if they wanna do it correctly and, and reach and get the biggest bang for their buck, so to speak. Absolutely, and you're their coach. You coach them through right. the entire process. So I appreciate you sharing that part about your business. Now I wanna to talk to you about as a mom, mm -hmm. as a wife, as a friend, as someone in the community. And um, I wanna know, like, there are people now who have said to me, you know, I'm a mom, but I'm so busy, and I feel guilty, and mm -hmm. I feel the pressures, and. Can you address that a little mm -hmm. bit? Is it okay to have a career? I think it is, but mm -hmm. I want to hear your take on being a mom, a wife, a daughter, and a professional career person or a business owner. Talk about that. It is a, it is a lot of pressure, and I think there are a lot of women who feel that they have to be um, the best at all of those place in all of those places, and yeah. so if they do work. Um, then they do feel guilty because maybe they're not home as much or if they're home all the time and they're a stay-at-home mom which is the most important thing that you can do I believe that then they f are made to feel guilty because they don't have an outside career or a job outside of the home where they're not financially contributing to their family right and so I think women it's wonderful that we have an opportunity now today to be all things we want to be yes but the but it's still there that we must be everything to everyone. Right. And so I, I feel now more than ever, a lot of women have um, more pressure maybe um, potentially than they may have in the past. And and I think what the only way to change that is for women just to be real yes. and to be um, honest about that. Yes. That yes, I'm a wife. Right. I'm a mother. Yes. I'm I have a couple of businesses. Yes. But nothing is perfect. No. I am not perfect and no. and I think social media unfortunately and where we're at today, you know, we all feel with Instagram or whatever that we want to portray this perfect person, but I'm not sure that 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 exists. In fact, I know it doesn't. And and I don't even love the word balance because I'm not sure that that exists either. That's an illusion. You have to prioritize, not balance, because there's no scale that says, let's measure Christy from a zero to 10 on being a mother. I don't think that should exist. We all have our own faults and strengths, right? Mm -hmm. Where my house is messy today, right now. And it's okay. I don't want my wife or anyone else to be judged and say, well, the house is messy. How can you get it like that? Well, today's what, Tuesday? You know, mm -hmm. like, sorry, it's just gonna be that way. The laundry's piling up. Well, you're not the only one with arms in the house, right? Right. Right. We're not in 1950 anymore. Mm -hmm. This is not about mad men, mm -hmm. you know? So let's connect this all together. So your, your journey through the media of, of being a, a journalist, going to PR, commercial real estate, 
What's next for you? <laughs> That's the million dollar question. Right, right. Um, I don't know. You know, what I've tried to do as I get older is um, get out of my own way a little bit better. Sure. And just sort of open up myself to opportunities. And so uh, not try to pigeonhole myself into what I think I'm supposed to do next or what other people may think I should do next. I am I'm just opening myself up to what the universe says I should do next. And so I'm trying. It's hard. It's a daily struggle. But um, I'm just excited about what, what the next chapter holds. So in our final minute here, I wanna, I'm want to. i going to ask every guest of mine to give a little bit of um, advice. Mm-hmm. And the advice that I'd like to ask you is um, people have to say no. People who are busy and, and, and prioritizing and balancing things like yourself have to say no. What would you say to the person who wants to be all things and everything? I am that person, and so it's a it's a good question, Jay, because I still um, struggle with saying no because I want to help and I and I do want to be of assistance to people. It's just part of my human nature. Yeah. Um, but I am learning as I get older and with all of my other responsibilities that you cannot be all things to all people, and so you have to prioritize. And so, if you have to just tell yourself, okay, well. If this takes me away from my kids or right. whatever you feel is your priority in life, is it worth it? Um, and what do you get from that? And so asking yourself those types of questions before you just have that immediate reaction to say yes to everything, uh, right. I think is important. And listen, I'm trying to practice that myself, so yes. I am not perfect at Neither that. Neither am I. At all. Trust me on that. Yeah. Well, Christy, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for being on The Connection, and I really do appreciate you. Well, thanks for having me. So much fun. All right, join us on The Connection weekly as we make a podcast with interesting people like Christy and find out their connection, right, to their why, their connection to the community, to the connection to their family, to their business, and whatever may connect them. So, Connector Nation, thank you so much for listening. A Parkville Media Production.